So fission has been used um, to devastate a country um, in the form of a bomb, but nuclear fission can also be used in a controlled fashion to generate electricity. It does this without any air pollution and without creating any greenhouse gases. Um, in the United States, we use nuclear fission to generate about 20% of our electricity. In some countries, that number is as high as about 70%. If you had a pencil-sized cylinder of uranium, it could power a typical car for 20 years. So like this size, this much uranium could can generate enough power to run your car for 20 years. Never go to the gas station. That's a lot of energy, right? And that does not put greenhouse gases into the air. It does not put any smog producing compounds into the air. Yeah? Is that assuming like, that all the energy is used? Aren't like, cars are like, really crappy efficiency of like, less than half or something like that? Um, that's assuming. I, I think when they do a calculation like that, they're saying, well, how much gas would a typical car use? And how much energy would that have, would that produce? Yeah, any of these sorts of calculations, um, it's, it's not even reasonable to think about significant figures. You know, 20 years, yeah, probably give or take five or 10 at least. So a coal burning power plant um, would use 2 million kilograms of fuel to generate the same power as about 50 kilograms of fuel will generate in a nuclear power plant. So this is a much more concentrated source of energy than is found in fossil fuels or even solar power or any other type of, of power. So we're going to talk very briefly about how do we use fission to generate electricity. So here's a simple diagram of a nuclear power plant. Um, here is the reactor. Inside the reactor are fuel rods. Those are the yellow ones. And the fuel rods would be composed of enriched uranium. So the uranium needs to be um, have enough uranium-235 in it so that you can have a self-sustaining chain reaction. Now, we don't want that chain reaction to get out of hand like a bomb and Blow, blow the place up, right? So they use control rods. The control rods are usually something like graphite that will absorb the neutrons and prevent them from going on and, and creating more nuclear reactions. So they use the control rods. They can lift them up and, rate, and lower them down to control the reaction. If they put them all the way down in, they can get the reaction to stop. If they were to pull them all the way out, it would get out of control and explode. So we've got this nuclear reaction occurring here. It's releasing a tremendous amount of energy in the form of heat. So we've got um, a pumping system here that is going to pump water through the outside of this uh, reactor core and it's going to be very hot, and so we get superheated, pressurized water, and then that's released as steam. I'm sorry, that's, that goes through here into the steam generator, where the, yeah, that Milky Way did me no good. So we run it through here. This is um, a system where water is being pumped through here. The water pumps, in here, we generate steam from the heat given off by that reaction. And the steam then trying to escape will push and rotate the turbines on a motor. And that's what generates electricity. So this water in the blue uh, system here is separated from the water in the red one. So they don't come in contact with each other. This water um, would have very little um, if any radioactivity in it. Um, so nuclear power has a lot of advantages. 
of course, it does have a couple of significant disadvantages. Um, one of those is nuclear accidents, and another is waste disposal. So once the uranium is spent, what do you do with it? The waste there is radioactive. But when we think back to how much energy we get out of the amount of fuel, the amount of fuel that's, you know, 50 kilograms of spent fuel would, would replace 2 million kilograms of, say, coal or something. And so, yeah, we've got some waste to dispose of, but it's really not that large in quantity, and we're not spewing stuff into the atmosphere. Um, nuclear accidents, of course, happen. Um, the, one of the most recent ones was in Japan with the uh, tsunami that flooded um, the, the power plant there. Um, there are many precautions and backup systems in place around nuclear power plants. What happened in Japan, my understanding is that the, the cooling basins, um, because you have to have some, some cooling going on here, uh, the cooling basins got flooded, and the pumps that pump the water then got clogged up because the ocean water had a bunch of junk in it, especially after it had come across the land. I mean, it's just muddy, yucky water, clogged up the pumps, the pumps stop, the cooling stops, and then we have this big problem. And that was something that, you know, they had all kinds of backup systems in place, but nobody thought of, well, what if, what if this inland area floods? It doesn't flood. Who can predict a giant tsunami like that? I mean, did you see the videos of that thing going through cities? I mean, it was just incredible. So we had another accident. Does that mean that we should never, ever use nuclear power? I don't think so. 